Hi! In this video, I want to show you how we cut aluminum composite panel, acrylic, and solid aluminum using a CNC router. There are a few factors that need to be taken into consideration to achieve good quality cuts. The main ones are material being cut, depth of cut, which is directly related to the number of passes, the size, material, and the shape of the router bit, chip load, which is given by the router bit manufacturer, spindle speed in revolutions per minute, and feed rate, which is the linear speed. The last three are related by this formula. The feed rate is determined by the spindle speed, the chip load, and the number of cutting edges of the router bit. Of course, looking into these factors only makes sense if the CNC router that we are using has been well built. We are using a pre Performa series with high quality motors that have been finely tuned and calibrated, also high end transmission, solid linear preloaded bearing blocks, and a strong steel frame that has been properly squared. So we only need to figure out the cutting variables. Let's start with aluminum composite panel. We used a 3mm ACM sheet with two silver faces. We found that these letters were quite easy to cut on aluminum composite panel. We cut them in two passes using a cheap single flute solid carbide upcut spiral O flute bit of 1 8 of an inch at 16,000 RPM and 35 inches per minute which means the chip load was about 0.002. The finishing wasn't bad, especially taking into consideration that we were using an inexpensive router bit of no brand. We could have achieved an even better result by using an on's route router bit from the 63600 series and go faster, but we thought the results were quite acceptable for this job. One thing to consider, however, is that these small letters tend to move a little bit at the end of the pass, and in many cases they fly away. One solution is using tabs at the time of the design. We did this and the results were quite good. We used Beaker Pro from Vectric to generate the tabs, but there is a variety of software that you can use. Here, under Profile Toolpath, you click on Add Tabs to Toolpath and select the length and thickness that you want to use. We used 1 8 for the length and 1 32 of an inch for the thickness. You can also edit the predefined tabs and change the number of tabs per vector and move the position of the tabs as an option. Then, you can click on Calculate to generate the profile. Run a simulation if you want, and easily export the G-code to Mach 3 or a different controller by selecting the right post-processor from the list. Now, let's go to Mach 3 and load the G-code that we just generated. And if we already set the X, Y and Z origin, we can just hit cycle start. When the machine finished, we used a cutter to cut the tabs. And finally, we filed them down. I consider this is only necessary if you will cut small shapes and when a tiny mark on one side is not acceptable and you want to achieve a perfect finishing on the sides. The next one we cut is solid aluminum. 
we used an Onsroot 65012 router bit, which is a single flute solid carbide upcut spiral O flute with a diameter of 1 8 of an inch and with a cutting length of half an inch. This is a router bit that is sold for hard plastics and aluminum, as the single O flute helps clearing the debris. We cut it in four passes at 9000 RPM and 27 inches per minute which means the chip load was 0 0.003. The first challenge was to secure the quarter of an inch aluminum plate to the table. Using clamps and screws did not work quite well for us in the beginning. The piece moved and the bit broke. So we tried cutting a pocket that was only 132 of an inch larger than the 12 by 12 aluminum plate. Then we inserted the aluminum in the pocket and that fixture worked much better. When we cut the first letter, we did only the first pass and then cleaned the debris and ran the other three passes. The tool bit didn't go all the way through because the plate was slightly tilted and we used a marginal value for the thickness on the software. So we removed the piece using pliers and used a grinder to smooth the edges on one side. After running the second test, we found that the bit was too long and too narrow and the coolant was not appropriate as we used master's cutting oil for pipe that was handy in the shop and the tool bit broke the moment we sprayed the lubricant to the tool bit. We found that A9 aluminum cutting fluid is suitable. Also mineral oil and surprisingly WD-40 seems to give the best results. We also found that using a quarter inch or 3 8 tool bit is better whenever a wider diameter bit can fit in the design as it is more difficult to break. Also, using a shorter cutting length such as 3 8 is ideal. The recommended fits and speeds from Onsroot are also in the description below. Cutting aluminum is completely possible with a solid CNC router like this. However, we still have to run more tests cutting aluminum, using a wider tool bit and a more suitable lubricant. We will show this later on a second video. For now, let's move on to acrylic. We started cutting acrylic using an upcut router bit with two flutes, and the results were quite disappointing. The acrylic cracked and left a poor finishing. Then we tried a cheap single O flute router bit, but the finishing was still terrible, despite using the recommended fits and speeds. So we decided to get a good quality router bit from Onsroot. These are specifically designed for hard plastics. These are more expensive than generic bits from China, however the results were amazing. This video is by no means sponsored by Onsroot. There are other reputable brands for router bits, such as Hard Lower and Amana Tools, but we found this convenient as they were available on Amazon at the time we ordered. As soon as we put on the new router bit, we noticed that the finishing changed from rough and unacceptable to smooth and visually appealing. We cut the 3 eighths of an inch in 3 passes at 18,000 RPM and 108 inches per minute, which means the chip load was 0 0.006. The recommended fits and speeds from Onsroot are also in the description below. If you look closely, you can see there is a small mark left after we cut the small letters on acrylic. According to our sign making friends, this happens even when using a high pressure vacuum pump to hold down the material. Some people opt to use a CO2 laser to cut small acrylic letters, but if you want to use a CNC router for this, one simple solution is using double-sided tape to secure the acrylic to the table. 
This will leave a perfect finishing as it prevents the part from moving after the last pass. However, we thought it is only a small mark that should not be a problem in most cases. Finally, we built this shipping package that ended up looking more like a custom box. We could have used the CNC router for this, but we decided to use a pre CO2 laser instead, because the curve is much smaller than the diameter of the router bit, so it is easier to create the inlay. Now, these samples are ready to be shipped. We will keep experimenting with different router bits and different materials and share the results of our research with you. Feel free to subscribe to this channel if you would like to know when a new video is released and give us a call if you would like to get one of these machines at a great price. Thanks for watching and see you next time.